land of Uz, not Oz. There lived a man named Job, not Steve Jobs, but still, he was not your ordinary person. He had great possessions, he had condominiums, villas, and multi-family houses for his very large family. He had a beautiful wife, three gorgeous daughters, and seven handsome sons. Real estates and had large shares in companies. He drove the latest car models and had hundreds to choose from. He is very thankful of what he had. He loved God and stayed away from doing anything bad. Hey, Jungle Boy. Take a look at my son, Joe. Have I ever seen such an honest and good man? I'd be good too if I had what he had. He has a collection of cars. Expensive cars. Looks like he even has a widescreen TV, an iPhone, the latest Wii station with a sports edition. What more could he ask for? You know, I know you think he's a great guy. But if I make his life a bit more miserable, he'd forget you in a heartbeat. Are you kidding? Job is one of my most faithful followers. He's an example for everyone to follow. Let me give Job a bad time. And I swear, he will curse you in your face. Knowing Job, he won't. I believe in him. So can I do what I want to do with him now? Do what you will, but do not hurt me. Well, Satan was dancing a jig over that. He knew he would find a way to get Job to curse him. nothing and no one left. I give you my sincerest condolences, sir. These were terrible news for Cho. He immediately went into mourning. When Jews were sad, they ripped their clothes, men shaved their heads, and then they dumped dust on their heads. Job ripped his robe, shaved his head, and prayed to God. He didn't badmouth God. He didn't blame God. He just said, God's, God's name, name be ever blessed. blessed. Don't you dare kill him. Oh, I won't. But I'd make him wish he was dead. And I'd make sure he'd hate you for it. not God's fault. I will keep loving and honoring God for the rest of my life. Maybe your friends can talk some sense into you. I will ask them to come. Job, 
YouTube. Yes. I could not recognize you. Well, we have come to sympathize with you and bring you comfort. Thank you. I wish I had never been born. I am suffering so much, although I have done nothing wrong. I am innocent. Will you be considerate if I tell you something? In the past, you have helped those who were weak and told them to be strong. But now, you have been weakened. And look, you are complaining. Why not call on God and see if He will answer you? God can do anything. And God is just, so God should help you. <coughs> Show me where I am wrong, and I will stop complaining. Although I am thankful that I have the words of God with me. Your words are of no use to me. You know nothing, Lucas. Traditionally, God rewards the good and punishes the bad. Obviously, you have done something wrong. Otherwise, God would have restored everything to you already. Tradition is not our best source of knowledge. Although our elders are wise, they themselves are imperfect. God reveals himself through nature, which means that you cannot totally understand God and all of his ways. I am at God's mercy, not yours. Only God can judge me. Your words cannot keep us quiet, and you cannot speak for God. But let us just look at the facts. You deserve to suffer even more than you have been. You need to search your heart and confess. I know that if you do confess, God will reward you with riches. Am I a joke to you? Just because you are not suffering and I am does not make you wiser. I have seen wicked men become rich, so why would righteous men not suffer? <coughs> Let me argue my case against God and not with such worthless friends. This conversation is not going anywhere. I came here to comfort you. And you argue and attack me. And some of what you've said proves that you have turned away from God. Which shows that you have sinned and deserve to suffer. Listen to my wisdom. The wicked definitely suffer. And if they do become rich, their riches do not last. This is not the way to comfort me. You are arguing and accusing me. And not only that, God has drained me. God has worn me down and is just using me for target practice even though he knows that I am innocent. God be praised. We'll talk to you once you became more reasonable. It's obvious you must be cursed. I don't even know God at all. How long will you torment me? Even though you know I have done nothing wrong, I certainly do not deserve this. I blame God. God has taken everything away from me. But hear my words, I know that my Redeemer lives, and if I die, I will see God in heaven. Well, I may not know what it is exactly, but I do know that you have done something wrong to deserve all of this. Listen carefully. There are times when wicked men die peacefully, and I am sure that if you asked around, you would find somebody like that. But their punishment will come afterwards. I am suffering. Because it is God's will. Listen to me. God can use suffering to make us listen. Job, job, job. I hear I you. Hear you. I've, got I've got a few, got few questions, questions for you. For you. Where, Where were you when I created the earth? earth? Did you Did ever look at the unfolding of a flower? flower? Ever, ever count how, how many stars, stars are in the sky? sky, 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 sky. Job, 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 what do you have to say for yourself? Are you going to drag me into court and blame me for our life? It is you, God. I am your humble servant. I am here to serve you, listen to you. 
Not to question you or to blame you why I suffer. I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be stopped or should be questioned. I run the universe. Don't try to dismiss me or make yourself larger than me. Now, I have a few things to say to your so-called friends. Lucas, I'm fed up with you and Luna. You haven't been honest with me or with Job. You dare to call yourselves friends? Go, make a sacrifice to me. I ask Job to pray for you. Job did what God had asked of him. He prayed not only for his family, but also for his friends. Soon enough, everything went back into perspective. His potent faith returned from its displacement, and with that, came along all the blessings. Business offers were once again lining up for him. He rebuilt his properties and own once more extravagant hearts. His wife was also showered with blessings as she was able to bear seven sons and three daughters of incomparable beauty. Once again, for the second time in his lifetime, he was nothing short of anything, all because of his faith, the God 